In life planning, there is no plan B. I'm Jean Fanacara, and my guests are coming to this podcast for a reason. There's no rules, no BS, just pure biohacking. I don't want to know what you have to sell. I want to know who you are. Welcome to the No Plan B podcast. I'm Jean Falacara. Today, my guest, Chris Burrs, is the uh, co-founder and CEO of SES Research. We're going to talk about um, a specific molecule um, that we already talked in the past on a previous podcast with uh, Ian Mitchell. Uh, but uh, we're going to explore a different way uh, this molecule is used and uh, what are the benefits. So let's get uh, Chris on the show and let's talk about uh, where he's coming from. Welcome to the New Plan B podcast. And today I'm super thrilled, guys, because we are to- going to talk with Chris Burrs and a specific molecule and the support of that molecule that goes in. And he's going to explain us that. But um, what he's com- where he's coming from, it's way more important. When you look at uh, what Chris did in his career, uh, you're going to go like, oh my God, uh, from marketing to science to business development. But you've been around for a while. Chris, welcome to the show. And why don't you introduce yourself? Jean, thank you so much for having me. You know, we met kind of serendipitously on the street. If I recall correctly, you were doing handstands, you know, like any normal French guy on the streets. (laughs) I was walking by with my wife, probably just finishing a meal. And it just made sense uh, for whatever reason, you know, life sends you these signals for us to have a conversation. And thank you so much for having me. Um, Yeah, I I do have a pretty diverse background. Uh, I I played uh, semi-professional soccer. Uh, I never got Got paid, but people on the teams I played on got paid. So I think that's the definition of semi-professional soccer. I was actually a player coach in college. Uh, so I love the sport of soccer. Of course, you call it football. I would yeah. call it football if I didn't live here. <laughs> <laughs> And exciting things happening here in the, in the U.S., right? With Messi, like that's that's kind of a crazy. <laughs> He's here in Miami now. Oh yeah, no. How 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 amazing is that? That's just that's just not. Have you bumped into him at a grocery store yet? <laughs> well, no. You know what? I was in the street and somebody was like with the t-shirts, and I was just like, "Why are you selling those t-shirts?" And go, "I you know where, but Messi is coming to Miami." And I go, like, "Oh no, I didn't know that. Who's Messi?" How crazy <laughs> amazing is that? Anyway, so so yeah, definitely soccer. Uh, I did comedy improv for about five years, and that was professional comedy improv uh, at a small theater that's here in Houston. Uh, I I've been manufacturing a molecule, a carbon nanomaterial. I've been I've been what I call a happy go lucky carbon nanomaterial scientist uh, really since 1991, and we can kind of jump into that. Um, I, I was going to school. I'm studying mechanical engineering. I knew from a very young age that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Or I just didn't know what that was going to look like. My business partners, and we've been business partners for about 32 years now, uh, he was working on the University of Houston campus. That's where we went to school. Uh, he was working actually at a, the Texas Center for Superconductivity. So it's a, a building and a, a, an organization that's housed inside of the University of Houston. Uh, and he was actually separating this molecule, and we'll talk about it here in, in, in a second. Uh, and, and one day his professor came in, and this is Dr. Paul Chu, very famous in superconductivity activity circles. He came in and said, you guys are some young college students. This material is selling for $6,000 a gram. You should go start a business. And and my business partner is from an entrepreneurial background, did kind of a, a simple napkin calculation, which mostly involved $6,000. <laughs> and he was like, yes. And, and actually, he had a, a, a lab partner at the time, Diego. They started this company. Uh, we were good friends. They, they brought me in. I was actually supposed to go away. They brought me in in order to help build the equipment to manufacture this uh, this molecule. Uh, and just to share with you, the, the molecule is it, uh, it was discovered in 1985 and the yeah, scientists who, who discovered it won the Nobel Prize uh, in 1996, uh, in 11 short years from you know discovery to award. Uh, it's 60 carbon atoms and, and I'm holding it up. If you're listening, just imagine, ironically, a soccer ball. Oh, it's true, yeah. And a soccer ball 
represent the, the same between the carbon atoms. Yeah. So you have a spherical molecule of 60 carbon atoms. It's the first closed cage molecule ever discovered. And again, the three scientists who discovered it here in Houston won the Nobel Prize for that discovery. In order to manufacture that molecule, you actually have to take two graphite rods, the best way to manufacture it. There's, there's a number of ways, but you take two graphite rods and you vaporize them in an inert environment. So no oxygen and at a slight vacuum, right? So you have to have a chamber that can hold a vacuum. These are all pretty complex things to engineer all together. Uh, by the way, graphite is the hardest, one of the hardest materials on the planet to vaporize. And so it takes local temperatures of the sun to vaporize these graphite rods. And in fact, we actually actually have a sight glass to kind of watch this reaction as it's occurring. And I'll, I'm going to tell you, it's a naturally occurring molecule. We'll get to that here in a second. But you have, actually have to have welder's goggles between you and that reaction, or you'll burn out your retina. Wow. You'll actually get a sunburn. It literally is local temperatures of the sun. Um, out of that comes a soot. That soot has about 10% fullerene and the fullerenes are a whole collection of molecules. C60, the soccer ball shaped one, is the most abundant. C70 is the next most abundant. And it kind of looks like a rugby ball, a little, little bit of elongation to a soccer ball. Uh, and then you get 76, 80, 84 on up. And in fact, it's it's possible to have, a, a, I mean, conceptually possible uh, to have a super large molecule, something that would be big enough that if it wasn't so thin, you could see it, but it's going to be so, you know, it's going to be atomically thin. So you, so you can't see it. So, so that's discovered in, in 85. My business partner in 91 starts manufacturing this molecule. Uh, we, when we talk about it from a supplementation side point of view, we talk about it as ESS-60. A lot of people know about carbon-60. We say that carbon-60 is for industrial applications. ESS-60 is carbon-60 that's been processed for safer human consumption. So, Chris, I have Allow me. So the purpose of the manufacturing, the discovery came up. Um, we find this molecule for what application was the first thing. So you, yeah. you started something in a various way from the origin of what the application was for this molecule, correct? Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, the, at first, we used to joke in the very early days that the molecule was really good for funding. <laughs> because <laughs> if you wrote, uh, uh, you know, a, a grant doing a study on C60, C70, or fullerenes in general, even kind of nanotubes, you are almost guaranteed to get funding. What's what's really amazing, and, and let me talk about the, the materials. I like to say that the material performs as well or better than the best material in almost every application. And so what that means is things like inks, bags batteries, tires, photocells. This is often where people who know I'm talking about a supplement get uncomfortable because mm -hmm. they just said yeah. inks, batteries, tires, photocells. Yeah. They're not usually things that you think of that will go into a supplement. The, mo the molecule, right? So you think about that so closed cage soccer ball shaped molecule. It actually has six fold symmetry. So there's six planes through this molecule where it has, where it's symmetric. What that means is it's incredibly resilient. There's lots of carbon, carbon double bonds. Those are the strongest bonds known mm -hmm. to man. Uh, there's lots of those in this buckyball. Uh, as an example, you can fire this buckyball. This is, again, for consumption, we call it ESS-60, at a plate of steel at 15,000 miles an hour, where most molecules will just shred apart. This one in my head, I picture it like compressing and then bouncing right back, right? Like an actual ball. Uh, so it's incredibly resilient. Early on, we knew two things. So one, it can hold up to six electrons. So those are electrons that can sit on the outside of it. Those electrons can get pulled off of it. Uh, there, I believe, someday there will be a Bucky ba battery. This is affectionately called a Bucky ball. Uh, I love the name Bucky battery because that's just that it feels like that should already exist. <laughs> um, you know, a typical lithium battery, and it's actually cost competitive with lithium. Typical lithium battery degrades because of actual physical material degradation. So, you know, yeah. your cell phone works wonderfully for the first maybe every month and then yeah. it just starts going down and you're like, after a year, you have to change it. Yeah. Right. Right. Amazing how that works. <laughs> I always say, don't give me more features. Just no. that'd be a longer battery. I don't need it to yeah. do take better pictures, or, but I don't even know what a better phone call sounds like. Just give me more battery. So, so it's physical degradation of the material that causes lithium batteries batteries to degrade. Where the buckyball has the chance of of doing better is that it can hold six electrons and those six electrons can be removed without any degradation So to the material. So you still have your closed cage molecule with no, no degradation. So it, it's pretty amazing. The other thing that's kind of fascinating is, you imagine it's a soccer ball shaped molecule. There's a void in the middle of it. It turns out that it's large enough for any atom on the periodic chart to fit inside of it, right? 
So there's a new symbol in chemistry because of this discovery. The at symbol, like we're familiar with our email addresses, right? Yeah. Well, if you say lanthanum at C60, what you're saying is lanthanum physically trapped inside of the cage. So it's not covalently bonded to the exterior or ionically bonded. It's physically trapped inside of it. And it creates, you know, early on, there's this really interesting theory of, well, let's put a radioactive atom inside of it. Mm -hmm. That's all the chemistry that works with benzene. And, and we'll talk about benzene here in a second, which is both scary and amazing. All of the chemistry, the wet chemistry that we have for benzene works on the exterior of this cage. So you can make it attached to something like a cancer cell. So now you're delivering a radioactive load, payload directly to a cancer cell. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, target. Uh, yeah. So so when you think about benzene, we don't have modern society without benzene, right? If you wait, and you don't like the molecule itself. For and the molecule's the, bad, right? It, yeah, right? it sounds so it, like toxic. toxic. It yeah. is in fact toxic. It's a known carcinogen, but we don't have plastics without benzene. And we can mm -hmm. debate that whether that's good or bad. Um, a lot of medicines, a lot of detergents that we use, we don't have those without the benzene ring. Right. Well, for that reason, and because that actually benzene ring exists in quantities on the exterior of the soccer ball cage, scientists thought the molecule would be toxic, right? So they put it in a toxicity study. It was done out of the University of Paris. The results were published in mid-2012. And what they discovered is that it wasn't toxic. In fact, in that study, they gave test subjects, in this case, it was Wistar rats. They gave them water, one group water, one group olive oil, and then one group olive oil with ESS-60 in it, right? Because it's for consumption. Instead of being toxic, those test subjects that were given the, the olive oil with ESS-60, really the My Vital C formula, lived 90% longer than the control group, right? So so there's kind of wow moments in, in this kind of mm -hmm. long story. One is $6,000 a gram. That's pretty wow. Significantly more expensive than gold. And the other is a 90% extension of life. Uh, and I know you know this, and a lot of your audience knows this, the next best way to live longer in terms of researched way to live longer is calorie restriction. Yeah. If you reduce your calorie consumption by 30%, I call that the starve yourself one third to death diet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can that's extend good... your life by 30%. 30%, yeah. And, and that's in multiple animal models. That's like, I think as simple as yeast, as complex as pigs, like these yeah. are very well documented. It's a great way to live longer. Um, not many people sign up for the uh, starve yourself one third to death diet like and maybe it's marketing they need a better marketing spin <laughs> yeah yeah or maybe um, teaching people to be more resilient yes yeah absolutely right like so so you use your body's natural resilience right. in order to yeah. to combat aging like that's the, that ends up being the ultimate goal by the, by the way if you had said that i was any sort of long i was going to be any sort of longevity aging expert five years ago before this study really came out which was even longer than five years um i would have just i would have chuckled because it just wasn't on my radar yeah. Uh, and now having we you know, were the oldest and longest producer of this molecule on the planet. Uh, again, started the company in 91. We actually supplied the material to that original University of Paris study. And it is peer reviewed published research and, and were mentioned in that study. So we're, we really are the, the foundation of this industry. And and as I'm kind of understanding, as, I, as I'm really kind of dealing with the challenges uh, of being in the supplement industry, and, and I can talk about that uh -huh. here in a second, um, I'm... I'm like, well, what are, what are the potential mechanisms? And we'll certainly talk about that. What are what are the ramifications of potentially living 90% longer? What else is out there, right? Like, what are what are the things that are going on? And it really feels, you know, they they talk about kind of this universal consciousness where I've landed in this space with this molecule, this ESS60 molecule, and you know, David Sinclair is publishing his Life Saban book, and Tony Robbins is coming out with his Life Force book, and you know, all of this stuff is all all changing right now. Like, yep. we're, you know, and Dave Asprey, with, we, we, we met at the biohacking conference coming out with biohacking. Like, this is really a quantum shift in um, in, in the thought processes around aging, um, yeah. whether it's, you know, your health span or your lifespan. It, both, yeah, both yeah. Together. We, we uh, actually launched the uh, life spanning movement because uh, you remember when we spoke uh, in Orlando, I told you the problem with biohacking is like people have a really negative perception of it. So we said, okay, we're going to change that for life spanning. Uh, so invented the word and registered the trademark and everything. But uh, so here we are. You are right. 
today people are very conscious about um, the fact that we want to live longer, but we don't want to live longer just to live longer. We want to live longer to be able to do things, to explore more, because there is more um, interesting stuff going on around us. And we want to know them. We want to see what is coming up. And at the pace it's going, we are all like very curious to see what is next. Um, have you seen Brian Johnson spending $2 million a year for supplements? Yeah. Uh, to to a certain extent, I have a huge respect for Brian Johnson. Uh, but I think that the way it's done is kind of you can uh, you can address critics in a way because if you are ready to spend that much money where everything is already out there, we all know that the molecule it is using have been used by biohackers for decades. It's not new what he's doing. Uh, you spend that much money to get there. Why don't you spend money to educate people? Yeah, yeah, t- yeah. Turn around and 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 yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, it, you end up with different uh, personalities moving a movement forward, right? Right. And some of them are, you know, Dave Asprey. Let's like be cutting edge, uh, like you. Let's get publications out there and let's yeah. do some certifications so that people have mm-hmm. can, can have confidence in this industry. If other people are just like, I've got the money, let me let me <laughs> yeah. spend it and yeah, and and, 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 and use it like for me. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you use it for you, the $6,000 molecule, but it works well on you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're using well, one. <laughs> you know, you bring up a really interesting thing that as 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 I started sharing the story of these test subjects living 90% longer, um, there were a surprising number, and certainly this wasn't in biohacking circles, but it was a surprising number of people who were like, well, why would I want to live longer? Um, and, and, what I, and, and, and you're kind of aware of this, right? Which is, I realized later it, it, it took me a little while where, where if if you ask somebody the question uh, hey Jean, how how would you like to live longer but in an affirmed state mm-hmm. um where you don't have the mental capacity and you don't have the physical capacity that you have today you start thinking well i'm i'm not sure how long and then i want to know what the decline curve is and then right. we, we chop it off at some point uh and so i started rephrasing the question which is hey Jean, if you had the same mental capacity that you have today and you had the same physical capacity the ability to stand right. And stand your head. <laughs> <laughs> and then would you be interested in living longer? Yeah. And and the reality is not everyone's, even then, not everyone says yes, right? But it really dramatically shifts. And I think that's what, you know, David Sinclair is doing for advocating that aging be called a disease because it's not yet. Mm-hmm. And and I think that quantum shift, I love what Dr. Gundry says. He says, I want you to die young yeah. at a very old age. Yeah, right? and I, I love that. That's, right? That's, that's what yeah. we all, yeah. I think, not all, because I've talked to people... <laughs> <laughs> but that's what most of us are, are really looking for. And and as I share that story, then people come back and say, okay, well, well, what, well like, what is the possible mechanism, right? So the first is the results, now trying to understand uh, the mechanism. And, and I know there's some controversy around uh, looking at aging. The medical community kind of has the concept of, of aging is related to inflammation and mm-hmm. oxidation, right? Yeah. There's debates around that. Um, it's interesting that our product does, in fact, trick tick both of those boxes, right? So- uh, if you think about antioxidant, there's a ad hoc study out there, 172 times more powerful than vitamin C. And then if you think about in- inflammation, I don't want to get too product focused here. So, so keep me on track. Um, if you think about uh, inflammation, then then we are allowed to say that it helps mitigate inflammation related to exercise. We're not allowed to talk about any other types of inflammation, whether it does or doesn't, just we yeah. need more research on it. And that's kind of an FDA uh, restriction, which I think is, th- is the right restriction that the FDA puts on, on the industry. Yeah. Well, the industry of supplement is quite wild anyway. So uh, as long as you don't get into that door. It, it, it's fine uh, now to go back to uh, the state of mind of people willing to live longer or not. I think that first it depends on the age they are in. If they are old enough and still autonomous, they will say yes. If they are too old and uh, pretty alone and cannot, not able to move, they, will, they probably will say, wow, well, no, I'm not interested. And then the young saying, ah, no, I'm not interested. Um, there is I'm a, never going to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or some are so depressed that they would die right away. Yeah. Uh, but that is a, 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 a phenomenon of society and it's, it's our society that uh, drives that. But uh, to go back to our molecule and your story. So you were 30 years ago in a lab doing those research, ESS 60, $6,000 a molecule. That's why it's not sold on the street by drug dealers. Because <laughs> <laughs> you need to make a vacuum chamber that has no oxygen and graphite, you know. 
kind of a almost medical grade graphite rods. Oh, you know what? To, to go back to that, um, you, often people hear, oh, you manufacture this in a chamber and they're like, oh, then this is man-made. And, and I want to clarify that. Right. So the molecule is naturally occurring. In fact, if you collect the soot from a candle, right? So you put a cold mm -hmm. plate of steel over a candle, you'll get a black soot on there. That's going to have parts per million, parts per billion of this ESS60 molecule. When you think about, um, you know, whether we're going to be producing peptides or we're going to be producing different hormones, synthetic hormones actually often have a different structure than the natural hormones, right? So they're so it's not that they're identical, it's that they're separate. When we manufacture this, you can imagine it's only 60 atoms, right? It's yeah, one of the smallest molecules you've probably ever talked about. <laughs> Right. Um, there's only 60 atoms of carbon on it. So when we manufacture it in a reactor or we collect it from the soot of a candle, it is the same. We have all been exposed to, you know, ESS 60 at some point. Right. In in our lives, because we didn't it know why. It, it, yeah. Yeah. We didn't know what, what was the effect or uh, if it was good or not. Yeah. Um, and, and just to bracket, because uh, it, some people will have the same uh, thought that uh, just crossed my mind, you know, in this society, you heard a lot about the C14 mm. or marking the half yep. age and things like that. And just to um, put some light into the discussion, that has nothing to do with C60, okay? Uh, yeah, one is no. the atomic carbon-14 and the other one is a molecule. Yeah, well, and, and carbon-14 is about the, 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 um, the, it's, I think it's the neutron count in the actual carbon atom. Um, and, and we actually have done, we've done some manufacturing. We've actually taken graphite rods, drilled them out, put in carbon-14 powder uh, so that it's easier to trace through the bodies for, oh. for different medical applications, yeah. for different it's applications. It's a marker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so, um, so yeah, it's, but it's very different. That's just an, that's an impact on the individual atom as opposed to, you know, a carbon 14, a, a 14 collection of, uh, collection of 14 carbon atoms and yeah. in one molecule by the way 14 carbon atoms would actually be a sheet of graph graphite. yeah that's all that's all it is oh. and there is a lot of uh people talking about graphene oxide and it's gotten spun up into kind of uh, the vax situation mm -hmm. uh and reality is is that one the the ess60 molecule is vastly different than a flat sheet of graphite and by the by the way if you think about your graphite pencil mm -hmm. what your graphite pencil is doing is it's leaving graphene sheets on your piece of paper like so we've been exposed to graphene you know since they've been using the graphite pencil so it's it's not a, a dangerous molecule um whereas graphene oxide okay you, you can probably look up at some different different research for that um I, I wanted to share uh, what an interesting journey. So, so, so one of the things I want to share to go back to antioxidants, right? So, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. Yeah, we ha we have kind of a new theory, and I don't know if I got a chance to share this with you. We get you gotta you gotta think about our our, our situation, right? So, we're happy-go-lucky carbon nanomaterial scientists. This paper comes out, and the 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 test subjects live ninety percent longer, given our material give, live ninety percent longer. And we actually start getting phone calls. Hey, how much of this should I consume? Oh. And if you think about us with carbon nanomaterial scientists, yeah. very conservative, we're like, don't, wait a minute. You don't <laughs> you're, exactly. Yeah. You're asking me how much of this stuff that we sell to research institutions around the world to put into ink, batteries, tires, and photocells, how much should you consume? Yeah. Zero. We actually <laughs> we actually put not for human consumption on our labeling. Uh, and that went on to our labeling about mid-2013. So you think of the company history, 1991, all the way to 2013, we did not need not for human consumption on the labeling. Now, just to be clear, the literature was concise and and very clear that it is safe right like there is no studies where it's processed popular pop uh, processed properly and that's what we call ess60 um and it had any detrimental effects so we were confident that the molecule was safe we were just like conservative scientists going inks batteries tires photocells don't don't yeah. consume it so from 2000 and mid 2013 until 2017 we'd get like one call two calls a week and it would be people saying you know crazy biohackers because now i am one <laughs> <laughs> going, hey, I'm, I'm on C60. Exactly. <laughs> how much should I take? I mean, yeah. and you're like, you mean how much should your rat take? Because yeah. it's, it's not for human consumption. And then they would say things like, you know, my hair is growing faster. My knee pain is gone. And, and we're like, you mean your rat's hair is yeah. growing faster and your rat's knee pain is, is gone, right? Because it literally <laughs> says not for human consumption. And so from mid-2013 to 2017, my business partner and I would get together uh, about quarterly, so about every three months. We're like, okay, like th 
this is, you know, people are, are consuming this despite our warnings, despite kind of advising them appropriately. Do we want to do anything with it? And and in that time frame, I actually found, and you'll appreciate this kind of with your your strategy for uh, uh, for kind of certifying products. I found a research paper, peer reviewed research paper that said 50% of, of the supplements that they had tested, they just bought some off the market. 50% of them did not have in them what they said they had in. Yeah. Right. And there's, right. it's bad, right? It's it really is bad. bad. Yeah. And not only that, like you start getting into, you start digging down into this rabbit hole. And you see like, that they're all over the place for the rest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's not only maybe it doesn't have as much vitamin C yeah. as it says, right? Because that's a minor infraction, right? I, I sold you a gram pill and it had 0.95, yeah. right? It's still not appropriate, but not that bad. But they're also saying that some of these actually have medications in them, right? Yeah. Things that need to be prescribed, things that are actually yeah. dangerous in quantities that you're not controlling. And so that was reinforcement that we shouldn't get into this industry. And so we still had not for human consumption on our labeling. So I don't mean one joke. One day we're probably going to be uh, certifying the Thai pods because same thing, like uh, the dishwasher stuff, the kids oh. were true. They, they were eating. <laughs> You're going to eat it. Make, make sure I'm it's not certified. blind anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can jump out the bridge. Or, or you could certify like a cinnamon challenge, right? Isn't that one of the things where you're shoving cinnamon in your mouth? Um, so, but yeah, no, um, keep going. Those, yeah, the supplement industry has been like, it, it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we, you know, it, it made the decision not to get into it. Um, and, and, and imagine during this, we're getting all these testimonials about like just crazy testimonials. And part of me is like, does this happen with anything you put on the market? Like it, it, if, if you put not for human consumption, are you automatically going to get these? <laughs> like I'm literally, literally trying to approach this as a scientist and, and, and some of my conversations were like, Gene, maybe you're sell, sh sharing with me. I can do a head stands, you know, 15% longer. And I'm like, I believe you as yeah. a human telling another human. But as a scientist, I don't know what to do with that information, yeah. right? I just don't know how to process it. How do you run all these studies for all these testimonials? And then finally in 2017, a guy with a big YouTube following is in, in the kind of Bitcoin space, uh, started talking about all the benefits he was getting, taking it on a daily basis. And our phone exploded from two times a week to 10 times a day. So then my business partner and I like, okay, yes, we're happy-go-lucky carbon nanomaterial scientists selling to research institutions around the world. And this is bigger. Like this just got a lot bigger and we're entrepreneurs. So what are we going to do with it? And and we really asked ourselves two questions. Uh, the first one is a moral question. Are we comfortable selling it? I take it. My business partner takes it. My wife takes it. Everybody on our team takes it, right? So that's a, that's question one. By the way, it's not a requirement to work here. You don't have to take the to work here. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the other one is like here in the states you've got the FTC and the FDA and so you got to cross the T's dot the I's yeah. and we're doing that and so we really at the beginning of 2018 started bringing this to market that's when I've been taking it probably latter part of 2017 I've been taking it you know daily uh, since then and and I've I've got some 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 interesting testimonials uh, related to that but I wanted to just throw out let's get a little geeky here because this is kind of fun um we got these head to toe testimonials. And I'm trying to figure out like what what could possibly be driving this? What's the mechanism? What's mm -hmm, the potential mm -hmm. mechanism for this? And one of our most consistent testimonials is people take it in the morning. They report mental focus and energy during the day and better sleep that night. And it is, in fact, true that if you improve sleep, right, the most restorative and healing medicine Her, that you can yeah, make, can right, and energy great, right in the day, yeah. um, if you just get better sleep, we all know sleep is good for your mental, physical, and emotional well-being. So, so maybe it was that. And that's where uh, I used to kind of hang my hat. But we've got a new theory, uh, and, it's, and it's driven by some, some research, and it's driven by a, a a really interesting concept, uh, and it's called the BOSS theory. So buffering oxidative stress system. So what we do know from peer-reviewed published research is that this ESS-60 molecule gets into the mitochondria, right? We also know from way back in the 90s, this can hold, well, it's an antioxidant, but we know that it can hold up to six, six yeah. electrons, right? So we know that it can function as an antioxidant. So the current theory is, you know, in the mitochondria, the power you I'm going to be powerhouse speaking fire here, here, right? Yeah. Powerhouse of every cell, yeah. just like every powerhouse source, whether it's your car going down the street with the exhaust coming out or your power yeah. plant, you know, with the smokestack, there's some negative byproducts. 
In the case of mitochondria, it's reactive oxygen species, those things that do oxidative damage in our bodies. And we all know different parts of our body can get depleted of components from time to time. The mitochondria has in it, you know, a smokestack has a scrubber. The scrubbers for the mitochondria are glutathione and metal melatonin. Interestingly, mm -hmm. the sleep hormone, <laughs> one of our yeah. testimonials. Yeah. So if that mitochondria gets depleted of those antioxidants, then that free radical is left to go around and do damage. We know that this ESS60 molecule is present. So I think it acts like uh, a paddy wagon. Think about Bourbon Street, right? You're on Bourbon Street. It's the end of the night. Your reactive oxygen species are drunk and breaking windows and tearing up cars. And you've got your glutathione and melatonin police to handcuff them and take them off of Bourbon Street. But when they're gone, what happens to those reactive oxygen species in the presence of this ESS-60 paddy wagon is it holds on to them, but it holds on to them reversibly. So it can be this buffering system until that mitochondria can replenish the glutathione or replenish the melatonin, and then it can handcuff it and get it off a of bourbon street. Um, so not only is it kind of an, an additional uh, antioxidant in the mitochondria, our current theory is that it performs a different, it performs differently <laughs> as a, as a buffer, as opposed to just kind of a, 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 a negation uh, element. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's current theory. And that would explain head to toe testimonials, right? Like yeah. if your hair's growing faster than what's the mitochondria. Yeah. Well, when mitochondria is improved, everything's better. So yeah. Uh, okay. But those people, they were saying like, I'm taking that. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Uh, my hair are growing back. My skin is fantastic. How they are taking it? Like, it, basically, is it a powder? Is it liquid? Is it what it is? Yeah. How, do you, so, how did you uh, supply your... Uh, what was your supply chain at that time for science and what it is now? Yeah, so we're the largest manufacturer and distributor of that molecule on the planet. Um, so when they ordered it from us, we actually sold them a black powder, right? And okay. it's just a black powder. Um, Put it in the nose or... No, <laughs> only when it's in neat lines. No. <laughs> and then you can do black and white. Um, no, so so they actually took it and dissolved it in olive oil, right? Oh. It turns out that that black powder is not water soluble. So you can consume it. You could snort it because they've actually done that with rats to test for toxicity. Um, they've injected, injected it perinatally. So, so it's known to be safe. Your body, the body just processes it and you excrete it out because yeah. it's not water soluble. As soon as you dissolve it in an oil and our products are olive oil, avocado oil, and MCT oil, it gets that individual molecule down to a monomolecular layer, right? So you're not dealing with black crystals. Imagine like sugar crystals, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. They get dissolved in water. You've got these black crystals. They get dissolved in olive oil. By the way, it takes a really long time to dissolve a small amount of this molecule into olive oil. We actually blend ours between two and three weeks uh, in order to get the maximum concentration. So it's not just like you drop sugar into a glass yeah. and it's gone. This is two to three weeks. So, of big so these people that they were taking it as a supplement, trying it from the black powder, how, how, how did they do that? They, they knew the... That's a great question. So we always sold it dissolved in olive oil, oh, right? Okay. Hey, so you don't have to go through it. There are a number of people, even today, who will buy our powder. They'll mix it. They'll use an Erlenmeyer flask. They'll use a, a magnetic stirrer and they'll mix it for two uh, two to three weeks and then then they'll consume it themselves. And there are some uh, potential cost savings there. Um, but in general, e even back then, we were already selling the oil. And, and when you're selling that oil, now you're at a monomolecular level uh, and, and it's significantly more bioavailable. You're actually able to get it in, into your system. Hmm, that is very interesting because I did figure out that it was going to be uh, soluble in olive oil and not in something else. Like yeah. I would have gone like solvent. We were talking about benzene. I was yeah. that, um, in my head, the first thing as a chemist, I would go like, oh, the only way I'm going to solve this problem is like, I'm going to put solvent into that. Yes. And, and, and actually in the separation, in the isolation, in order to get pure uh, C60, then we ultimately, uh, by getting rid of the solvents, turn it into ES60 uh, is with solvents, right? So I told you about vaporizing that graphite rod, mm -hmm. right? It turns into a powder. That powder on a good day has 10% fullerenes. So you got to separate that fullerenes from the other carbon, we call a carbon crap because it's just in our way, right? So 90% of that just gets thrown away and that 10% you save because it dissolves. Imagine if you are separating sugar and sand and you've got the, you're, you're, you're spot on chemically, right? Yeah. If you, if you want to separate sugar and sand, you dissolve the sugar in water, you filter it, the yeah. sand stays on top of the filter, the sugar goes through in solution, you boil off the water, yeah. and now you've got your sugar. In the case of, of fullerenes, you dissolve it in a solvent, whether it's hexane or toluene, these are not good 
actors. These are things you want to stay away from in general. We've got the lab here to handle those materials properly. Um, and again, you filter it. It goes through a solution uh, and then you boil off that solution and now you've got this powder. And then you do further processing to get rid of any residual solvents uh, so that then you call it ESS60 and then that's what actually goes into a product. So you're spot on. Like, yes, it is solvents. It turns out there's some uh, similarities between these vegetable oils or really fruit oils, right? Um, um, and 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 the solvents that normally will dissolve fullerenes. And so that was their idea. But a lot of people ask, like, why olive oil? Yeah. And I was like, well, it's the University of Paris. Like, maybe they just had olive oil handy. <laughs> I had to do all of it. After they were doing headstands, then they like. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Oh, but by the way, this is pretty exciting. Um, tell me. The professor in that original paper, right? So this is Dr. Fathi Musa. He, uh, you know, did the research and I got to give so much credit to them because if you think about it, they, again, they thought this was toxicity, toxic material. If you think about facts, right? The fact is when all of the control group, that group of rats given water are all dead and all of the rats given the quote unquote toxic material, right? RES 60 are all still alive. It is not toxic, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is a fact. It's it's yeah. No longer toxic. Yeah. Um, and instead of just ending the study, they actually did the animal husbandry to keep those test subjects alive. So the way the study worked, uh, a typical Wistar rat lives 32 months and dies with a known amount of tumors. So the each day they live longer, they have a little bit more tumor mass. The rats that were given the, the ESS-60 live out to 62 months. And even though they lived 90% longer, none of them had any tumors, right? And that's that's pretty exciting. I like to kind of quell people's excitement because a lot of people are like, oh, anti-cancer. Anti yeah. No, no. There's a big difference between dealing with a cancer that's metastasized right. and a mm -hmm. cancer that, um, that you might be a prevent. We know things as simple as good nutrition, good exercise, good sleep are cancer preventatives. And, and in this big. case, they're, 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 they're just tumors, right? So it sits it in the category of possibly, not even probably, but right. possibly a tumor suppressor, um, cancer, cancerous or otherwise. So, so that's a, a pretty amazing result. So they ended up doing another two and a half years on this study that was already, couldn't be more conclusive and it was right. already done. Now, uh, what's exciting about, I think it was about nine months ago, Dr. Fathi Musa just put a letter in, in, out into the kind of the scientific paper world and he was like, listen, I did this study 10 years ago. The rats lived 90% longer. Nobody stepped up and done kind of um, government sanctioned toxicity studies in the effort of like, how do we move this in the direction of of, of more adaptation? And uh, and we had actually just finished two studies uh, that were, you know, typically sanctioned. They're OECD, I think, or it's OEDC, one one of those, right? So these are the, the lettered studies that are, that are typically necessary in order for FDA or wow. the different countries who those are the studies that that the that you tend to hang your hat on from a from a yeah. federal perspective. We had already finished it, so I reached out to him and said, "Hey, we've already done this. Um, you want to publish a paper with us?" And so we've actually got the paper all typed up. We're shopping it around to different uh, uh, different publications to to get it published. So uh, pretty excited to be working with the professor who did that original study. Yeah, yeah, it's very promising. Uh, uh, so the extent of that now. Of course, the, the molecule itself has is uh, great potential. Olive oil seems to have a great potential that has been unexploited for years and years, and we were just like scratching the huge potential. surface of olive oil. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So both well, combined, I guess. Yeah. Well, I remember in that study, one group of. Uh, Test subjects with star rats was given water, one olive oil, and then one olive oil with ESS. Right. The ones with olive oil actually lived 30% longer than the control group. Already. Right. So I like to say, whatever olive oil you consume now, consume more. Like just yeah. consume more. You look at Dr. Gundry, like he has a big push uh, to get olive oil more into the diet. He says, I love this. The purpose of food is to get more olive oil into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Why not? He's he's got so many so such good one liners and, and they're great. Like they, they make a lot of sense, uh, for sure. So question for you now. Um it's only by ingestion or you can use it on other like you know, the cosmetic industry is like booming at a base that is like crazy sick. Of course, the supplement industry is insane, but uh is that something that could be adapted to uh Skin treatment, dermatology, or you mean like this? <laughs> right. So it's kind of an interesting story. Um, we were actually, you know, in 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 the time span between mid 2013 and 2017. 
some of the testimonials that were coming in, I mentioned kind of hair. By the way, these are testimonials. And let me just throw this out. The FDA has not evaluated our product. It is not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. But we're getting these amazing te testimonials and, and hair and skin improvements was, was one of them, like just solid, rock solid uh, hair and skin improvements. And then one of our business partners, she would consume the product, right? And this is the oil product. And then if there's a little bit left on the bottle, right, it, she would take that and she'd rub it on her skin oh. and she noticed some differences. And so she was like, we should come up with a face serum. And first, I don't know if you notice this, I'm a guy, I'm not really like face serum, you know, predisposed. Also didn't want to be in the supplement industry at all, right? So it's <laughs> so not for four years not to get it so you can imagine, <laughs> <What's next? laughs> you can imagine how excited i was to get into the face serum industry um but you want to support the business partner there's some reasons to th that it makes sense the efficacy makes sense uh and so we put the product together we start getting it over to our customers and the testimonials were phenomenal now about that time my director of research comes to me and he says hey chris I found this other molecule that's got 30 years of research behind it, uh, skin and hair improvements, uh, and it's a peptide. Uh, you should look at the research. So I dug into the research. I'm like, wow, like a 30-year track record of peer-reviewed published research with skin and hair improvements. Let's let's see if we can put these together. And the first thing is it's a peptide. We call it UTH29. Um, peptides, with this particular peptide at least, is water-soluble, right? And we have an oil-soluble product. We're trying to figure out how to put these together. Yeah. Your chemist mind is going, oh, you just use an emulsifier. And that's how you typically put oil-soluble and water-soluble things together. I just don't like the word emulsifier. And if you go Google emulsifier, there's really not much positive to say about emulsifiers. So we ended up putting a two-part solution together where you use the UTH29 uh, oil soluble, uh, water soluble lotion, right? And it's a blue lotion. And then you put some of our ESS60 activator with it. And it's we call it a skin reduo set. You just put two drops per, uh, per squirt and then you mix it. And so you activate it right there in your hand. And mm. that's the thing. That's the thing that I end up using now. <laughs> That's the thing that I want to so, try that. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be happy to get some to you. I don't know. I think I sent you. Did I send you a care package? I haven't got it yet, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like you. I'm very interested into that because uh, on the skin level, I've noticed that uh, every time that you there is a, a Dr. Brian using this um, uh, nitric oxide uh, cream in two components. Uh, that one is a catalyzer and the other one the reactor. Uh, mm -hmm. That works pretty well, but it's it's kind of very harsh. He's going on the EFDA approval as well on that. So, and I do remember when I was in the street, uh, your beautiful wife had a, a fantastic skin, and that was the question I asked: like, what the, do you put on your skin to be like so like yes. perfect? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I would suggest it's what she consumes, right? Yeah. So, so of our, course, our, our ESS sixty. And also using using that product. You know, actually, I love. I haven't told many kind of anecdotal stories, but I, I love this particular one. We've got uh, uh, an influencer and distributor who one of my early calls with her. Her name's Sarah. One of my early calls with her, she's like, Chris, I have to share with you. I have like a face lotion and serum addiction. I actually have a credit card that my husband doesn't know about, so I can buy face serums and face, you know, face uh, lotions. And this is with our oral product. She said this product was the best thing she'd ever put on her face, right? So then I came out, right, with the two-part, right? The the UTH-29 peptide, the ESS-60 activator. And it was really interesting because the first call with her was like, yeah, I got some flaking and I'm I'm not sure I really like the product. This is about two weeks in. And then our next call together, we actually do shows every now and then. She goes, so before the show, she was like, so I, I visited, um, I think just a, not her dermatologist, but somebody who will go and do, you know, facials or whatever. I'm like, oh, it looks like you got an, uh, an uh, O2 treatment, right? Which oh. is an expensive face treatment that you can yeah. do, uh, ozone treatment. And um, and so that flaking mirrored an ozone treatment. And then now she's in love with it. And, you know, she, she sells wow. a lot of it. And yeah, so uh, I'll be sure to, to get you some product. For sure. I, I would love that before I go to spend some money on those expensive stuff that you do on the face. Yeah. Yeah. True. No, I appreciate it. You yeah. Try it out and, and yeah. kind of understand, it, knowing the science behind it and then and then understanding that, you know, it's got a, a good company behind it. Uh, I'll yeah, definitely get yourself. Well, you've been you've been around for a while, and uh, the parkour is just like it's fantastic because 
you know, this is the beauty of life. Most people that create something great for the planet are there on purpose, like by chance. And it becomes like, after, after all, you look at it and you go like, oh, but that's obvious. But in the moment, it's not that obvious. And you need, you need some like repeat action and reaction to get you there. And of course, in business, opportunities comes only once. Otherwise, uh, Plan B doesn't exist. It's it that yeah, it, there is no Plan B. There is no plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and you're there, and it's been like thirty years, and you're still moving forward. Well, uh, you have any plans for the future? Well, I, I think I mentioned before we got started, uh, I'm going to do a health summit. Uh, so it's going to be an online health summit, and we'll talk about how we might be able to collaborate on that. Uh, that'll, I think that'll be out, the, the event will actually occur in, uh, in February of next year. So I, I've got a lot of work between, between now and then, uh, as I was sharing, uh, I've got a book, it's at the publisher. It's That's about cool. to come out, uh, live longer and better. Uh, and it's kind of the story that I've shared here, plus kind of some of the, the stuff that I've learned in the, in the, in the path of becoming a longevity expert and sharing those things. And really some, some mentors of mine, Dr. Gundry's mentioned, uh, David Sinclair's mentioned, uh, Dave Asprey, of course. So, um, so that I have got a book coming out and I've got this health summit. Those are the things that I'm, I'm focused on right now. And, and really just constantly looking, you know, at the biohackers conference, you're, I'm looking for those things that have the right level of research behind them, mm -hmm. uh, and to figure out how we can collaborate on, on bigger and better things. Like what is, what is the, you know, I read a book I ended up as an audio book. So I listened to it. I got it off of Amazon. I, I would, I would have to spend some time to dig through. But the premise of the book, it was related to longevity, was at some point there will be someone, I believe this, so I, I'm sure a lot of a number of people don't believe this, but I believe this. At some point, there will be someone who is the last person to die of old age. Right? I don't. I don't think we're going to cure death because if you no, it's fall a an yeah. airplane without a parachute, yeah. like there's yeah. no coming back. Um, but at some point, there'll be somebody who's the last to die of old age, and it would really suck to be that person, unless like you did, right? Unless you're just okay with that. Um, and the premise of the book was you should be doing all of these things that you can to extend your finish line. So hopefully. Hopefully you get past that uh, terminal velocity of aging. I don't know if you've heard that phrase. Uh, it was mentioned in in, in Life Force, yeah. where the medical medical science can extend your day, or your life by more than a day every day, mm -hmm. right? And that's that terminal velocity where you were now in the realm of there'll be somebody who who who, do the, who will be the last person to die of of, of old age um, of natural causes. So. Uh, I, I'm excited about that and, and excited about, you know, jumping into all of the research. Biohacking conferences are amazing for this. I think you've got something that you're that you're working on maybe in Dubai. Uh, that's yeah. pretty, hopefully I didn't give away anything, uh, but that's that's pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting. You can edit it out. <laughs> that's pretty exciting. And um, so anyway, like I, I there's a, there's a, uh, the, the current plans are book and then health summit. And then let's see what happens after that. And the book, yeah, the book, we, we need to, uh, to, 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 uh, talk about that book in in Biohackers magazine for sure. We need to have yeah. uh, uh, the release uh, and and everything. And do you remember, you're just at the third of your life. So yep, absolutely. I'm plenty of four. So yeah, well, yeah. If the, if the average person lives uh, ninety percent longer, the average person lives. The average person lives to one fifty two. By the way, I did there at the biohacking conference. There was a um, a booth glyco age. I think yeah. I did the test. The test. I did that too. Yes. So I got my result. Well, I think I've got it, it for a while, and I just yeah. remembered it. Uh, my age is twenty one. Holy smokes! <laughs> That's what I said. Whoa. Well, you uh, and you didn't spend two million dollars like Brian Johnson yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so that's I don't even know what to do. Like, again, as a scientist, well, like, what do I do? This they're telling me my, my you should, yeah, you should actually uh, promote that uh, and use it as a tool because glycan age is the most accurate um, aging metrics that is around. Like, it's way more accurate than uh, methylation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, whoa, <laughs> See, it's, it's for you. It's going to be one arm and stand, not an <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. one arm <laughs> or no arm. <laughs> That's there. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, it's pretty exciting. And, and I literally, I just looked it up to, today, uh, and printed it out. So I'm, I'm digging into that. I need to, I, I, I've d I did the methylations tests and, and, and I think they had, um, the, the, like DNA age. 
right? Was yeah. one of them. Yeah. And then there's another yeah. one. Yeah. And um, and it was, I don't know, five years old or, or something. But one of the things, I, and when we did a short study with a, a, a doctor out of California, and one of the things that came out of that study was even though they were taking a product, if they got COVID, the, the DNA age just plummeted. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, well, how accurate is this thing, yeah. is this result? If having a cold, <laughs> right, can, can affect you know, a viral infection, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it causes it to pl- you know drop off the drop off a cliff. Uh, and so like I get it conceptually, okay, maybe you're down for a little while and as you recover from that, but it just feels too, um, yeah. I don't want to use the word, yeah. ha- too, too, too uh, sensitive, right? Like It is, it is. And it's, it's all over the place because for the fun of it, I've been doing these tests on a very regular basis. And I was coming up from 28 to 38 to 43 to 36 to whatever, all over the place. So, so, so you're happy, you're sad. Yeah, you're happy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you work harder, then you relax. You work harder. No. Yeah. But uh, no, it was all over the place. Then I was uh, um, comparing to other uh, aging tests, telomere, uh, telomere measurements. Uh, uh, or, um, but the research behind um, glucan age is fascinating. Uh, Yep. They came upon something very, very interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think um, I, it's probably not for me. I'm looking for. I so I approach it scientifically. I'm looking for the thing that's not an aggregate of data, and people who are like this tend to be this age. I'm looking for, you know, what is the fuse, right? And can you extend the fuse? Which yeah. is, I think, why people like the tel- telomere length kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but but it was, yeah, it was quite. It's 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 quite appropriate, of course. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, some of what it's looking at is inflammation, yeah. like how your body manages inflammation. Um, and that's why I'm I'm very happy to talk about, again, we are allowed to say that our product addresses inflammation as it relates to exercise, just not any other type of inflammation. I like to mention as you relate to exercise, because most people will just purely state, reduce inflammation and no statement behind that. I, I, this is why your company is very serious. Like everything you state, the statement you address, the precaution, um, it's always like really backed up by science. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's yeah, it's what you would hope a an ethical scientist would do and say, and that's ba- very important to me. Yeah, yeah. thank I, you. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, uh, it have to be said because it's true. It, it's funny because uh, at the uh, biohacking uh, um, conference when we met. You gave me one pack of uh, the um, the supplement, and you said, "What? Well, yeah, you have them." Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my wife tested it as well. It's yeah, great. yeah. It's insane. Like for me, I was just like bluffed, but she was just like, "Holy smoke! This is very cool." Yeah. And 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 you probably took one serving. I'll share with you. Uh, and I don't know what our time frame is, but I'll share with you this anecdote. Uh, we have a, a guy who's a big proponent. He's a two-time U.S. ultra running champion. Uh, his name is Anthony Kunkel. He's won a U.S. championship at a 50-mile race and at a 100K, which is 62-mile race. Um, and my first conversation with him was really interesting because he's super geeky. He's he's like an athlete monk, which actually a lot of these high-end athletes, yeah. like that's all they do and yeah. they're focused and all their budget goes there and there's often not yeah. much budget. Like that's what they, they're monks. Um, but he gets on the product. He's, he was worried maybe it was a crutch. But our first conversation was, hey, I was taking one serving. I didn't really notice anything. And then I tripled the servings and I was blown away. And he said, I think your product could be the difference between somebody having a hobby in running and having a career in running. Like that was the impact that he feels uh, with the product. Mm. And, uh, and so, yeah, he's taking about triple servings. He's actually worked it into his training blocks where he starts on MCT, which has a lower concentration of the ESS-60. Actually, I'll talk about my my routine, um, but he starts with the MCT with the ESS-60. MCT works good as a kind of appetite suppressor, kind of fills that void, keeping him lean. Uh, and then as he gets closer to the event, he'll shift into the olive oil. And, and, and triple servings. Um, in my case, here's one of the things that I noticed. Uh, in 2018, I'm really starting to take it on a regular basis, but it didn't, it didn't have it built into my routine yet. And I would often get to, you know, two o'clock, three o'clock, and I'm yawning, thinking I might need another cup of coffee or thinking I might need a nap. And I could always look back and I hadn't taken the product that morning. Um, now what I do is, so so Bulletproof Coffee, right? Dave Asprey. Uh, I, I don't do the ghee, but I do MCT in my coffee. And so I do about a teaspoon and a half and a typical serving is a teaspoon. So I'm doing a little bit more. A teaspoon and a half goes in the coffee. While I'm blending that MCT in coffee, I take a teaspoon and a half of the olive oil. And then 
I often have a, a salad for lunch and I'll put our avocado oil on that. And just so you know, people are like, well, which one should I try? I mean, unless there's a particular reason for you to take MCT, the highest concentration of ESS60 is in olive oil. Olive oil. Uh, yeah. And that's about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. And then next is avocado at about 0.6. And then next is MCT at about, uh, at about 0.3. 0.3. Oh, no, excellent. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. it. It's, 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 it's a small yeah. amount. It takes a yeah. long time to get it to dissolve and there's just not much in it. Like that's, that ends up being the reality. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. We could have talked about neuroprotective effect and all these things but i think you have to come back to uh, the podcast and probably on your next visit i'd like to dig into the effect of your product on brain but just focus on that yeah like, that would be, that'd be very interesting yeah. yeah all right that'd be a, that'd be a fun conversation oh and just if any is it okay if i share i made a link for your audience of and of course okay yes. yeah yeah if anybody out there is interested in and in trying the product like we're trying not to push it just share the science but if you are interested uh go to my Vital C, C as in carbon. So myvitalc.com uh, forward slash no plan B, right? And that'll get you to the landing page. What I often recommend, you can buy one bottle or you can get on subscription for a 25% discount. You can cancel. You literally can cancel at any time. Our customer service team, we have about 800 five-star reviews. They're not trained to talk you out of canceling your subscription. Just take advantage of that discount. Yeah. And there's also a coupon code. That code is no plan B and that'll get you an additional $15 off your initial. Nice. That was a great pleasure having you. I'm so happy we met that day, that night. Yes, that yes. So funny. And um, up to next. Yeah, I'm looking forward to connecting with you again. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.